I'm Eric. I'm Connor. And this is a PIO vlog. Aerial medic response. We will be firing at any smooth for little trains in Broadway. Go ahead and upgrade the car. We've got uh, four buildings of all the time. Uh, glass on three of them. And second one. Second alarm. We have the key 34, tower 45. Engine 42, engine 14, engine 44, engine 15, medic 34, medic 44, district 1, battalion chief 2, safety 18, medcom off 14, second alarm structure fire. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's so awesome to see you all. As always, Eric and I have some different incidents that we want to update you on that have been going on in our district so far in 2021. So let's get started. At 1.30 in the afternoon on Super Bowl Sunday, a strike team of Type 1 engines responded to assist our neighbors at West Metro Fire Rescue with an urban interface fire at Bear Creek Lake Park. After our strike team of engines left, an additional two Type 6 brush trucks were also requested to assist with that incident. It was a very fast moving brush fire with homes and golf courses nearby that grew to 535 acres. To complicate matters in the metro area, South Metro had a brush fire of our own at Cherry Creek State Park at the same time. When firefighters arrived on scene, they found a small brush fire at the time, but this fire was moving very quickly due to fast wind speeds, as well as dry conditions and dry vegetation. So firefighters immediately began attacking this fire. But because of that wind and those dry conditions, this was fueling this fire at a very rapid pace. So the fire had jumped a road that was inside the park and moved towards a residential area that's just west of Parker Road, but that backs up to Cherry Creek State Park. As additional resources from South Metro were being called to Cherry Creek State Park for the brush fire, Engine 47 was returning back to their station to get their brush truck when they spotted a house on fire along Tomahawk Road, just north of their fire station. Medcom, engine 47. 47. Engine 47 was driving down Tomahawk, uh, two houses down from the station, and we have a heavy smoke and fire coming from the attic and first floor of a single story structure. We'll be in the offensive of strategy. Fast attack mode, staying on this channel. Uh, confirm this uh, confirmed structure fire. I'll uh, give you more on a 360. The crew from 47 forced entry into the structure, performed fire attack, did a primary search and confirmed that no one was inside, and they were able to bring the fire under control almost completely on their own without additional resources needed. Thankfully, that worked in South Metro's favor because way more resources would be needed at Cherry Creek State Park very soon. This is the point when the fire changed from a small brush fire to a wildland urban interface fire because of the properties and the residents that were at risk. The upgraded call brought extra resources to the scene for larger fire suppression efforts. Evacuations were ordered for people inside the park as well as the residents living nearby in case firefighters were not able to contain the fire before it extended further. Luckily, crews were able to stop the fire from extending to structures in the community with help from a decent fire break that separates the homes that back up to the state park. Chief, I've got a natural break down here on this south side, but it has crossed over that natural break. If I can get another brush truck, I do have an area in the black where they can work that is west of the main trail.
that's but I got good eyes on the alpha too. Just got a little bit of a of line cleanup they're gonna have to do behind the head. Yankee division command up. Due to the rapid changes in wind speed direction and resulting size of the fire, firefighters split up into different divisions to focus on multiple tasks in gaining control of the fire perimeter. Crews were able to stop the threat to the residential area, therefore lifting that evacuation order. However, the wind caused the fire to make a run to the northwest inside the park, burning into trees and other dry vegetation. Firefighters used a variety of techniques, including burnout operations. This burnout operation was used to remove unburned fuel that could burn out of control if a wind shift occurred and the head of the fire grew towards the location where we were at. The danger there are the assets at risk, meaning they were outbuildings and beyond the outbuildings, campgrounds, which are oftentimes populated with a lot of people and sometimes vehicles and RVs. Firefighters used drip torches, which are full of a diesel fuel mixture, and when they're tipped upside down, the diesel fuel drains out of a small tube and over a burning wick, which drops liquid fire down to the ground and ignites the vegetation. This operation is done in a very controlled and methodical manner, and additional firefighters are staffing Type 6 brush trucks behind these firefighters in case there were to be a spot fire that starts, it could be quickly extinguished. With this fire being in the evening time, a few units stayed on scene overnight to monitor and put out hotspots that flared up. The weather that evening and into the next day provided snowfall, but the low temperatures also created conditions for water pumps to have the potential to freeze on the fire apparatus. You should be able to access the and pull maybe even more. Um, but it burned all the way down in here, and from here, this road right here, goes across this way and then there's this loop trail you'll see it on your MDT where we did the burning operation we have a farm we should be able to hold it with four of us this aerial view was captured by the Colorado Department of Fire Prevention and Control's Multi-Mission Aircraft, or MMA for short. They flew above the fire and provided mapping assistance, mapping both sections in at 101 acres for a total of 202 acres in size. They also used an infrared camera to help us identify hot spots on the ground, which you can see as glowing white. Flames that consumed the northwest flank of the fire burned right up to the beach along Cherry Creek Reservoir. Firefighters worked for four days straight to get all of the hot spots extinguished, even despite there being snow and ice on the ground, and some of the days were spent well below the freezing temperature as firefighters worked. Although the season is technically winter, Anytime we go for long periods without meaningful moisture and measurable rain or snowfall and the environment becomes dry like it is, we're very susceptible to wildfires and if we add wind to that, very rapid growth. Fire investigators determined that the fire was human caused, but they're not sure if it was accidental or intentional. On the afternoon of Tuesday, February 9th, Engine 31 was dispatched to a fire alarm in the East Building at Cherry Creek High School, located in Greenwood Village. While they were responding, school resource officers and school security found smoke in the hallways and a bathroom on fire. The assignment was upgraded to a working fire response, and when crews arrived, they confirmed there was moderate smoke in the hallways. Due to the high life safety hazard, a second alarm was transmitted. Firefighters established water supplies and pulled attack lines to both sides of the building and quickly determined that they were able to extinguish a small fire with a water can and that there was no extension. 
the second alarm and subsequent units on the working fire dispatch were canceled. Investigators from the South Metro Fire Marshal's office determined that the fire was intentionally set and a student will be charged. On Thursday, February 4th, South Metro firefighters responded to a vehicle versus a structure collision in the 8100 block of South Norfolk Street, which is in unincorporated Arapahoe County. When firefighters arrived, they found a vehicle had struck a garage and had significant damage, and it also struck a natural gas meter, which was freely leaking. The neighboring homes were evacuated, and firefighters conducted a primary search inside of the affected home. Thankfully, there was no fire and no natural gas inside of that home. The driver of the car was injured and transported to the hospital. A tow truck removed the vehicle, which gave access to Excel Energy personnel to successfully stop the gas leak. It also gave much better access for the technical rescue team to place more shoring inside of the structure to prevent a collapse. On the morning of Tuesday, February 2nd, South Metro responded to a traumatic injury in Parker. This was for a person who was working in a trench box and had dirt collapse on top of them, breaking their leg. When crews arrived, they realized that they were going to have to conduct a Stokes basket rope rescue. The technical rescue team responded and paramedics got down into the trench box to provide patient care. They used Tower 45's aerial as a high point to hoist the injured victim out of the trench and transport them to the hospital. Thankfully, no trench collapse occurred, so there wasn't a rescue from the sense of having to dig anyone out, but it was extremely difficult to get the patient out, and thankfully that operation went very smoothly. The person was transported to the hospital and is doing okay. for tuning into our vlog. Eric and I love bringing you what's happening in South Metro's district, whether you're living in Colorado, around the country, or around the world. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please find that subscribe button wherever it is. Make sure you give it a click, and that way you can know when we post new videos, new content, you are going to be right in the know in order to see those videos. Thank you guys, and we hope you all have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you next time.